we'll proceed like in similar manner as yesterday. So we will uh, do some small uh, theoretical work, but we'll mainly focus on practical exercises. So we will start with um, actually uh, proving um, the the um, the our last unfinished uh, theoretical uh, theoretical um, exercise. And in this exercise, uh, okay, maybe like test question, can you hear me well? Yes. That's great, thanks. So in our theoretical setting, we've got this uh, very simple classifier, which is just a linear classifier, which uh, uh, weights, this weight vector W can consist uh, only on of minus one, zero or plus one. We have got very simple loss function and we want to answer two like basic questions. So uh, how can we compute like optimal uh, W for a given data set? And how, ca how can we uh, compute like a W which minimize worst case loss against adversary? Uh, so these are two, two questions that we uh, work on uh, last time, I hope you were able to to do it uh, yourself. Um, but for all of you, this is the solution. So, uh, by definition, of course, uh, like, like let's first focus on on just just finding the like uh, optimal W in like standard uh, way. So, by definition, we are looking for such W which minimizes our loss function, of course. So what is our loss function? Our loss function is defined like that. So we just, you know, uh, in the simplest way, penalize bad answers. Uh, so we go on. This is, uh, we know that, you know, uh, dot product is linear. So we can put this W uh, transposed like in front. And here we've got like summation of all of all of these remaining terms. It's like basic linear algebra. And so what is this? This is just some vector. And uh, we want to like uh, guess like the, the optimal W. So what can it be? Uh, this W can be either minus one, zero or one. So if we want to minimize this term, so if like each coordinate of, of this, this large vector is negative, we want to have also negative W, uh, sorry, positive W. And if all of this is, uh, like, uh, and, and this, this other, this other uh, case is like symmetrical. So our like, uh, optimal W is this sign of, of, of this vector. So sign of the vector is just per coordinate sign. Uh, if there are any questions, just do not hesitate to ask uh, either by, by just, you know, uh, speaking or writing in our chat. So like this was this, this the first exercise. Uh, I hope you it's it's um, it's clear, and then now let's focus on our uh, our adversarial um, training. Uh, so uh, again, by definition, we are looking for like uh, W, which minimizes our like loss function, but our loss function is now in a, on a different form. So instead of just, you know, optimizing this as it was done in the previous case, now we are looking for delta, which actually um, somehow makes our x y as as bad as it can be. Uh, so we are looking for adversarial example, and then we are just uh average over over all um our loss functions for for uh particular examples 
And, but what is this? Uh, this problem is actually solved because as you can remember, this is actually the, exactly the same problem as we've done uh, in exercise one. So we know what is this optimal delta and we can just, um, uh, uh, just uh, paste it here. And you can see that this is like our, our optimal delta. Uh, so uh, again, we can do like slight uh, linear al algebra. So we can uh, see that over here when you just, when we, of course, this is linear as, 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 as the same argument as before. So here, what happens is we have like WT times sine of WT. Uh, and also here's this y i square term. So we can simplify this a lot actually because this is actually always equals uh, always always equals one. So we can just remove it. And here we got w times the sine of w. So you can see that this is just uh, you know uh, makes makes this w always positive because if this is like positive this is also this equals to one uh, this if this is negative this equals to, to minus one so in the end what we what we've got here is like epsilon times uh, l1 norm of w um and this like repeats for all of the um all of the uh terms in the summation so we can like put it uh, here mm. and in the end uh, we've we are doing exactly the same trick like previously uh, so we put uh, we we see that this term this this whole expression uh, you know um, we can like fetch this w in front of this this small summation so we've got like it looks pretty similar to what we've seen last time, except that this is actually identical up to this additional term epsilon w. So what this actually says is that, okay, you, you should generally, this term is saying, okay, you should generally, um, generally, um, uh, mm, set w to the sign of, of this formula, basically, but maybe you should consider sometimes setting w to zero when, when this is actually small. This is actually what it says. And when you just uh, think uh, about this for, for a moment, it's just, you need to consider which, you know, uh, which terms is like, give you the largest penalty. And basically, if this is larger than epsilon, then uh, this term is uh, like mo more important, and then you should set, set your w to one. Uh, if this term is smaller than epsilon um, and larger than minus epsilon, you should you should set it to zero because this term is dominating, and if this term is uh, again smaller than minus epsilon you set to minus one. Um, so actually I hope I hope you I, I didn't lose you guys uh, but uh, if even if you if you are lost on, on the math uh, the actually there is very like mm, nice uh, intuition uh, behind that. Why we go uh, so uh, like if you can remember like our previous uh, previous um, answer, uh, it was set W to the sign of this. So, um, okay. So our previous uh, answer was actually for, uh, uh, was the same as setting epsilon equal to zero in, in this, uh, in this equation. So, and here we are actually saying, okay, if you are not really sure. So if this term is really small, just set it to zero. So this is like kind of like uh, regularization, uh, very, very simple regularization. And 
this is like maybe also another view for generally robust robust learning uh, of course this is like very simple and basic basic example but you can somehow the um, the takeaway message uh, is that you can you can often see this robust learning as as um as type of regularization which says okay if you know this this you're like you're not very sure or you are like based on very tiny evidences maybe you should not consider this feature at all uh okay uh so that's actually ends uh our theoretical uh exercises uh for now and i have, have a question uh yes sure could you share a screen again yes uh we are like perfectly um synchronized uh yeah. me leaving and of course uh so i believe the uh, answers to the to this previous exercise are on on the, already on the website and this will be on the website as well uh, so what's your question why, why we got uh why i in the uppermost line so if you, yes, if you optimize delta, we just put de delta to each coordinate of delta to epsilon times sine w, right? Yes. And we got second. And how this is like second y? Yes. Second y was here. Okay, so, so it's just, we got just the first multiplication. One? So it... why we got this first one y? The first one. Because each coordinate is... of the delta is equal to epsilon times sine of y or sine of w and i think there shouldn't uh, be any... i believe it's i think um just let me give uh, give me a second uh so uh Okay, uh, yes. Okay, so as so in, let, let, let me go back to the first exercise. Um, so in the first exercise, we solve exactly this, this problem. So we are, we are looking for like optimal delta over there. And our conclusion was that delta is epsilon times sine of minus y w um yes so this when this w comes in uh, uh y comes into um into a play okay so, so we use the fact that this I, y is only plus minus one here because we can go out of the sign thanks so uh i will just provide this uh, this this answers also uh, on they will be on the website so maybe let's do this with this way i will submit it um if you have like any further question we'll maybe uh go through it like tomorrow um to not maybe lose too much time uh, right now uh, but i i believe it it should be right um okay uh, any other questions, maybe? Nope. Okay, so uh, let me show you. So let's go with with our ex like practical exercise session. Uh, so what we did last time, uh, we uh, let me remind you. So in uh, we've got our notebook, we've got our own function L2PGD for computing adversarial examples. We compute these adversarial examples. We see that we can fool the model. So we can like, the model always predicts uh, a goldfish over here. We, we also uh, actually have done what Oleg uh, have done on the lecture, but we've done it practically. So we, like train our model uh, on the adversarial examples and we saw that actually you know, this model 
we were able to explore these non-robust features and actually learn something and generalize, which is very cool. Uh, and uh, the, our net, next step is to maybe some do some visualization. I, ho I hope you now you are, are familiar with, with this, this notebooks and maybe we can go slightly faster. So what we will do, we'll, so there is this method of, of uh, visualizing gradients. So this is like next cell, you can run it yourself. Um, and this method, uh, so uh, visualizing, no, uh, one, once again, for visualization, your, your, your visualization, your, your model. And uh, so what you can do, you can actually compute the gradient on the, on your inputs. And what does it mean to, uh, what, what does it actually tell you? So you, uh, what, what, what is the gradient on the input? Uh, so the intuition behind it is that when you like uh, change this input slightly, uh, so if the gradient is large, it means when you change this input slightly, it will like, uh, if the gradient is large, it will also change your like prediction of your model a lot. And if the grad gradient is very small on your, on your input data, uh, uh, on some, then when you change this, this, this particular bit, then it will not change uh, a prediction of your model. So actually computing the gradients uh, uh, of our, your input can give you some information what uh, pixels are important or, or, or not, and you very often visualize it. We, we visual, visualize it in slightly different way. So if you will run next cell, you will see like the visualization of the standard model. And here each gradient is uh, like, um, we, we choose uh, a colors and like similar gradients will have similar color. And you can try to visualize our mo your model. And actually it's hard to see anything uh, over here uh, in, this, in, in this first idea of visualization. So we'll have like, um, so we'll try to do something maybe slightly uh, smarter. So what we'll do, we will uh, compute some random noise, add it to our picture and then compute gradients. And we'll do it like many times and in the end, we'll just compute average of all of these gradients and we will try to print that. And maybe it will give us like slightly better explanation. Uh, so again, what is the idea? So we will like use the same gradient explanation, but for a given picture, we modify it like randomly, like many times. And then we take average and uh, of these gradients, and we display the average of these gradients, and we will see if it, if it helps. So this is like next uh, exercise. Try to try to uh, implement the smooth gradient function, and uh, we will we will explain it in uh, in another ten minutes. So just to clarify, in this exercise, we use the pre-trained ResNet model, which we loaded yesterday, actually. It's, it's loaded in the beginning of the uh, notebook. So it's standard pre-trained uh, model from the PyTorch library. Okay, uh, so I, I hope you, you, you're, you've done well. Um, and let's see the solutions. Uh, so here, here we are. So as you could see, like in our first example, like this was really meaningless, but when we average over, uh, okay, let's first see what we've done really. So we, uh, oh, actually the solution is slightly different than I, 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 I suggested, but you could also use torch function for computing normal variable. Here in the solution we've got, we, we compute a normal variable using NumPy and then just create a torch tensor from it. 
and uh, and we use like standard deviation, which was provided here in this smooth gradient. And of course, the shape must be the shape must be the same F as shape of our image, and we need to just add it, add this noise to to our image. Uh, okay, so we computed this this smooth gradient, and what you can see is it looks like that. Uh, it's not perfect, but actually you can see something. For example. Maybe let's focus, I think, this orangutan face. You can actually, when you when you look through it, you can actually see this this face of, of this orangutan in, in in our interpretation. So we uh, we can somehow like averaging uh, through through like this many gradients compute um, be able to 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 interpret this model. Uh, it's nice, but it's not, uh, oh yeah, uh, it's not perfect, uh, but uh, we'll see how it works for robust model, because this is actually our goal in here. Uh, okay, so exercise five, playing with robust models. So we will not train our robust model yet. We will just use uh, use the the robust model, uh, all uh, like pre-computed robust model. So the the um, the uh, settings are like exactly the same as as in the previous uh, exercise. So we load robust models, um, and we will uh, sorry for for like. Uh, and we will try to, sorry, uh, we will try to uh, play with it and also try to change the predict prediction of the of our robust model. So we can, in this exercise, we want to verify if uh, you can, uh, you can change the prediction of uh, of our robust model, so try to uh, try to run it yourself. There are like no to dos in these models, so what you should see uh, actually is that as you would would uh, like to see that when you see our robust model, robust model, it's really hard to fool it. So here we are computing adversary examples. Uh, for for our robust model, and we see that actually he's still doing good. So, uh, original um, original answer was insect, and the, the answer for adversary example is also insect. Here is dog, 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 dog. It's 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 actually doing well. Uh, so you can you just run it yourself, check it out, and in our and uh, also, uh, with the, the, in the next cells, you will, will try to uh, see uh, what uh, what what happens when we try to. Uh, sorry, give me just uh, one moment. I'm a bit lost. Um, okay. Um, playing with robust models, um, and okay, and in the exercise six, um, we will, uh, there will be really some, some exercise for you to do. So we will do something which is called feature visualization. And what is this feature visualization? So we basically take the last uh, the last layer of our network and we, uh, so there is a number of, of, of um, neurons in this last layer. And we, we are looking for inputs 
which somehow maximize this this one particular neuron in our network and so we can do like two things so either we start with one picture and we will maximize we will change it just to maximize one particular feature of of so one particular neuron or even we can start with a random noise and also we can try to um, uh, find the like like change this picture in such a way that it will maximize one particular neuron in the net. So I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, with this uh, like interpretation neural networks. So like the usually we think about neural network in such a way that each next layer will produce like another like set of like more and more sophisticated features. So in the first layer, we will like uh, teach our network how to see or respond the lines. In like in the next layer, we will uh, our our network will somehow learn to like see like simple shapes, like I don't know squares or triangles. And like in the layer number ten, it will actually some ne neuron will be responsible for, for example, for responding I. Uh, and so here is some some way of interpreting this 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 models. So uh, here um, you um, just just we will ask you to to write this kind of feature visualization. And in order to do that, you will have to implement uh, like a custom feature maximization loss. So we will then use it actually uh, we use our l2pgd function implemented before and we will provide like custom feature maximization loss so what is happening here so we've got this get features function also as somebody mentioned you can you could actually check out the um, the code for this uh, for, for this function, but it's not obligatory. So what I am telling you, it's there. It's just um, give you like the the last layer of of our network, and we've got this custom feature number. So this is okay, and this feature number is telling us just please consider only neuron number seventy. In the last layer, so here is like a fancy function which actually, for a given feature vector, gives you this neuron that you are interested in. So this this uh, neuron th that is provided here. Um, so why it's written uh, such a way? Because this im is actually uh, a set of images. Um, so we will uh, just ask you to, and so you, you, you need to like provide your own loss function that will allow uh, you to maximize, um, to, to, find, uh, to find such uh, images will, which will like maximize the, um, this particular uh, loss function. So, so they will like find the input for which this, uh, this uh, particular feature is maximized. And as you can probably see, I skipped some small part of, of exercise number five. So we'll just go, to, to go back to this after doing this exercise. Uh, here, this this um, ordering doesn't matter. Okay, uh, I hope some of you succeeded. Uh, and let me just um, uh, go through it like more slowly because I, I think I uh, for a moment I was a little bit lost in this you know uh, large um, large uh, code. Uh, so let's go back to exercise five for a second. It's, there's actually nothing to fill in over there, but I, I miss a small part of it. 
So, um, as I told you, we are like routing pre-trained, pre-computed, robust model over there. What we were able to check is that when we compute adversary examples, so we are using our standard L2PGD function in exactly the same way as we used it before, but for this robust model, actually we cannot, uh, we, we couldn't trick this model, which is of course good. good. Uh, so you might ask what will happen when we uh, choose a very large epsilon. So we will. So we assume that at some at some point we will be able to trick our network, but also when we choose really large epsilon, uh, we probably our our pictures will um, will look different. So we will really modify our picture in a way that will be also visible for us. Because here, like uh, actually these two rows of pictures that you can see that these are for us, they look exactly the same, but the second one is modified, but it's modified in very like subtle way. Uh, the modification is small. So let's see what will happen when we, uh, when we just increase the epsilon. And maybe uh, it would be cool that you could play with it yourself as well. So here we choose epsilon uh, equal to 100. So it's pretty large and we, uh, are asking uh, our our L, L, L2 PGD um, to to make all of this uh, all of these pictures look like a turtle, and indeed we were able to fool our network. Uh, now it's all the time telling that this is a turtle, but actually all of our pictures they started to look a little bit like turtles. Uh, so when you just as a person, you, you can see that you can see often that it somehow resembles the original pictures, picture, but there are like many, many turtle features, uh, added and you could play with different epsilons. So, uh, maybe try to find the sweet spot. So like the 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 the, mm, the epsilon for which it starts to really um, really making bad predictions, but this is like the first. But you should already see some some this turtleish features of, of of these data points. So this is like a part that we missed actually. Sorry for that. Um, so let's go to now to this exercise uh, mm, six. And also, uh, it starts with like our um, our standard interpret gradient interpretation. So as you could remember, actually, this our previous for like standard neural net, uh, this interpretation was just a mess. So you could see something uh, after this averaging, um, but here. Uh, we, we are just computing gradients for this robots network and we actually can see something. So there is like some consistent patterns of this, of, of these gradients over here for robust networks. So we can somehow believe that uh, our robots network is somehow more interpretable as well. And let's go uh, to uh, to our feature visualization. So as I told as I, I, I told you, our task we we've got this relevant coordinates, and our task was to like provide lost functions which will help you uh, help us to maximize this feature. So as I told you, we've got like. Um, uh, a vector of 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 values for this one particular um, neuron for many images. Uh, so, like the easiest way to um, to compute a loss function is just okay. Let's take a mean for different for this whole batch of images, and this uh, this will be our loss function. Uh, Magic, if you could paste it uh, to um, 
to the to the chat, uh, and, and I don't know if we, if we paste like also solution for the previous uh, today previous problems. Uh, so maybe we should do that so everyone could could like run it yourself, and uh, because probably it might be tricky to uh, to copy it. Um, like from from the the, the video um, so what we will do right now we will uh, uh we will try to maximize one particular feature so we there is this 2048 features uh like in so 2048 neurons in the last layer of our neural net and we say we we are like taking feature number 314 and we will uh, run our L2 PGD and you, we will use our like custom feature maximization loss, which will maximize um, this one uh, particular, particular loss. Uh, okay. And what, what we can see that this is like uh, so we add this one particular feature to 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 this data set, and we might try to somehow guess what it this feature is. And uh, my guess would be that this is somehow connected with some kind of I I, I can see like this zebra shape. Which appears like like in this um, like uh, in all of these pictures. So it might be like maybe connected with some the special type of four. But I guess there is something more to it. Uh, and we can do the same for the standard model. So this was like for the robust model. So we we interpreted uh, the robust models and we it's maybe hard to see exactly what it is but you can see that it's maybe somehow somehow interpretable uh, and we, when we maybe like display all of these features uh, and play with it we could maybe gain some kind of intuition what it is and if you run it for the standard models so what actually happens the down so here we like very strongly like maximize this particular feature number 314 in the standard model and we can see nothing because feature number 314 in a standard model is probably one of these non-robust features which are like preferred uh, to, to, to choose in, in, in standard training so we cannot actually see the difference. Um, so which also said that these models are somehow maybe harder to interpret it. As, as Oleg said on the, on the lecture, it doesn't mean that these models are bad. They are maybe using features which are really hard to understand for, for human beings. Um, Okay, so what you could also see, uh, and uh, so in before we we start our visual, visualization from some particular um, particular um, start started our optimization from some particular picture, so it was able to change like the dog to something um, something strange. And but you, what you can also do, you can you can start with uh, with uh, a random noise, and uh, of course we want to take once again a robust model, uh, and we can then uh, maximize, I guess, uh, like the same feature number three hundred fourteen, uh, and you can see the interpretation of this feature. Uh, it might be the case actually that uh, that the the we that we choose some some subset of this uh, of this uh, like random subset of this uh, of this um, pictures. So maybe you are seeing different pictures. 
Uh, I hope so. Um, but it's also somehow this is like the method for for visualizing visualizing um, uh, visualizing our our like uh, our network. So because in the end we've got like the bunch of numbers, and we want we always somehow in machine learning maybe not always but very often want to somehow understand what is really doing and what happens is that for robust networks is usually slightly easier to understand um okay any questions uh maybe there are like someone some question asking meantime uh let me check it out. Uh, okay, I do not see any uh, unanswered questions. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so let's go. So like our next, uh, our next question, uh, our now our next exercise, and this will be the last uh, exercise uh, uh, for 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 today uh, is to implement actual robust training. So in the previous exercise, we just used some uh, pre-trained model. So we downloaded some pre-trained model, but now we want to really um, really um, train our own robust model. So what we will do, we will um, we will do it like in very, very similar way as we've done like the previous training. So we've got this this train model function, which is exactly the same function as we used yesterday, but we want to provide like two two functions, which will be adversary train loop and adversary evaluation loop. And you've got some partial implementation of these two. Uh, two functions and your task is to fill in the rest of the code so and this will be the last exercise for today i think we will give you slightly more time uh, for you that you can you can play with it uh, if you have spare time just do not hesitate to go to also for through previous exercise and just check it out that it also works works for you uh, ask questions uh we are here for you and yes mm. and i think we'll just uh have like uh, maybe another 15 minutes for for this exercise okay so i guess we should proceed congratulations for all of you that were able to to do the exercise um so what it should look like uh so basically we've got our data point and we want to um, swap this data point to a adversary example so we want to run our l2 pgd function uh, with like standard setting uh so we should um have this parameter targeted uh, set to false because we want to we don't do, do not want to fool our like network to to try to like um, uh, try to predict one particular target we want to just be as bad example we want to find as bad example as possible and there is this an additional parameter we just reduce output uh it just doesn't um matter uh really uh in terms of of of, proof of the results of, of this functions function and the rest is basically like the same as in in, in train loop so we have got our optimizer we do forward pass uh, we compute loss function and we, we uh, do backward uh, and, and and that's all um and like this adversary uh evil loop is pretty much uh pretty much the same so for each of points of uh for each or of our data points we we compute adversary example and we evaluate our our model on this 
particular adversary example and uh, this is a, there's an important aspect because sure. we don't use the no grad torch no grad for yes level. That, yes, that, that's very that's, important because we need the gradients to calculate the, exactly uh, exactly that's a pitfall uh okay let me i just wanted to go back to this previous but yes uh so here for example this torch no grad but uh, and as, as far as i remember in the evaluation function it was also uh, was run with torch no grad but here it's, it's important to to avoid this because we are inside of this function we are going to compute gradients actually and uh, so we actually what is happening right here we are doing like small gradient descent inside of big like gradient descent uh, so it's important that we will ha we have this gradient um okay so for those of you who are able uh, uh magic once again uh please paste like correct solutions uh for everybody for those of you who were able to um to implement it you you saw that what's happening that this uh training is much uh, takes much more time uh than like the previous one uh like the reason is like obvious so inside of each like uh uh each in iteration we actually run like separate like 20 step gradient descent so it's like it must be must slower uh, much slower than than like the previous version but sh but we can see that even that um we are able to to have some adversary um adversary accuracy uh, over here it's smaller than like accuracy of the standard model um but uh, still still it's like more than 50 percent um slightly more than 50 percent and uh what's also, also what we we can try to do uh we could try to of course as as before uh, visualize uh uh visualize like the features uh like uh visualize um the uh let me uh, just check it out what are we really uh, so uh, here we are computing our our um adversary examples so we were able uh, to 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 actually fool uh, our our network, but we we needed to 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 use once again pretty large epsilon to do that. So in this uh, in this uh, part, we just uh, want to uh, create adversarial examples in that uh, are similar to cat, right? We we take a label one which means cat and we want to change the uh, images so that the model thinks there are cats and we want to see if the linear network we just trained in the robust way uh, exhibit the same nice um, features like uh, how do the gradients look like and how do per perturbed images look like and we can see that the images are not as as great as before but they have some like um, there is hope uh, yes. actually i can see like this catish features over yeah, here and this, and <laughs> just, yeah because it was the cat it's more interesting to look at the airplane and see if you can see the yeah cat. yeah 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 yes i i for example like uh, this uh yeah. this yeah and uh, keep in mind that, that it was just a linear network right so even for such a simple architecture, the robust training brings like some nice features. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Magic, for this for this uh, explanation. Um, and I think we are done for today. So we have like two very nice exercises for tomorrow. Tomorrow our session will be will be closer. We will uh, try to implement, as you can see, backdoor attacks. So this was already covered by um, in the lectures by Oleg. Uh, we'll try to implement it. We'll see that that it works and maybe why robust training might help 
actually uh, with this simple backdoor attacks. And we also, uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, homework assignment for, for, do, for, for uh, all of the people who must do it and want to do it. Um, okay, so thank you very much. Um, in case of you, in, an, in case of any question, just do not hesitate to write us email or ask in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.